Welcome to the Carnivore Cast, the podcast focused on the carnivore diet and lifestyle, with practical advice from successful carnivores, citizen scientists, and top researchers. I'm your host, Scott Meslinski, and I'm here to speak with experts and experienced carnivores to get answers to your biggest and meatiest questions while helping you live your best life as a carnivore. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the Carnivore Cast on Patreon. By becoming a patron, you'll help us reach more people and continue to create content on Carnivore. There are also exclusive perks available, such as private Q&As, consultations with me, and more. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash carnivorecast. Check the episode description for the link. Thank you, and I'll see you there. Dan Quibel at The Bacon Experiment is the man who undertook the famous bacon experiment where he ate nothing but bacon for an entire month to lose weight. He's also a former vegan, raw vegan, and even fruitarian. Since then, Dan has lost over 90 pounds on keto and kept it off, gotten off medications, become a keto coach, helped hundreds of people lose weight and regain their health, and founded The Bacon Experiment Facebook group. Welcome to the show, Dan. Hey, thanks, Scott. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> of course. Excited yeah, to been, have you on. Yeah, I've been listening to your podcast and, uh, you know, I've, I've listened to a lot of keto podcasts over the years and it's nice to see carnivore starting to really kind of take hold now and, you know, get more mainstream and people are more open to it. And I think anything that has actual results like carnivore does, you know, it's kind of bound to happen eventually. <laughs> yeah. It's it's great to see it taking off, and um, I'm a huge fan of your story. But for folks who aren't familiar, maybe let's start there. Um, you know, starting with where did your where did you get unhealthy in the first place? I think is always a great place to start. Yeah. Okay. Well, my it, my story does go way back. Um, I spent most of my life, you know, overweight and obese, um, and actually, I still remember. Uh, a really good, you know, point uh, with to answer kind of what you asked. Back when I was 13 years old, I um, was in the doctors and I had my first gout attack, actually. So I started getting gout. Um, and I went into the doctor and kind of he wrote me a prescription and he put down gout and then he put down cause obesity. And I was like, what? <laughs> so it kind of caught me off guard that I and I started kind of looking at like I hadn't even realized I was overweight or obese um, because up until about, you know, I was about, I'd say, 10 or 11, maybe when I started to get about 12, 13, that's when I gained the weight. <clears throat> and it all came in on quick, like within a year. Um, I kind of turned to food. I was having kind of a rough time, you know, around that puberty thing, um, family stuff happening at home and I actually end up turning to junk food um, and yeah I remember I still remember when the doctor wrote that down though it caught me off guard because I was one of the fastest runners in my school I was always very active I was always people used to tease me about being skinny like so thin because um, I was into the WWF back then like wrestling and uh, they said well you'll you know you'll never be a wrestler you're, you're too little you're too skinny um, and then within a year or two, uh, as soon as I started, you know, I was having a lot of junk food, having a lot of, uh, I remember fries, French fries and chips and chocolate bars. Um, that's kind of what did it to me. And I still remember another thing, which I have never told this story before. So it's kind of an exclusive here okay. on your podcast. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of knew that I wasn't like, I come from kind of a poor family and, uh, you know, going to university and college, I just never, I looked at it as not an option for me. Um, like my family was struggling just to pay the mortgage, let alone send me to school. <clears throat> and I remember my grandfather, um, you know, he put a thousand dollars in a bank account for me, like a joint bank account. And that was like supposed to be a college fund. And I remember my grade seven, um, I was in middle school and every, every lunch hour, I would kind of go out and I would have chips and pop and that kind of thing or when I could afford it. Um, and one day I went into the bank and I thought, I wonder if I could get money out of the bank. I think I have an account here. <clears throat> and I took some money out of the bank and kind of spent it on, you know, French fries and the typical, you know, kind of uh, pizza, probably um, junky food or high carb food. 
And by the end of the year, I had went through the whole thousand dollars that was in that account. And I had gained probably 50 or 60 pounds, um, which to me tells me that when you hear people talk about food addiction and how addictive those carbs are, and I would even say, I would go as far as to say carbs and fats together as well are very addictive. Um, if you think of foods like pizza, French fries, yeah. chips, things like that. Um, so yeah, I, I went through my whole, you know, not that I was probably going to end up being able to afford it anyways, but that was kind of my justification at the time. Um, but yeah, I went through a thousand dollars and spent, you know, had all, all this junk and had gained the weight. And then ever since then, it's been a struggle. Um, I would say, you know, most of my adult life, I, I would lose weight a little bit, um, by going on to something and I would really go all in on it no matter what that was, you know, if it was uh, WW or, you know, the, a vegan diet or the one I ended up eventually ended up at the, the fruit diet, but I would go all in. I would do as much research as I could. I would be as strict as I could. I would try to follow it exactly um, and do it perfect. Um, but I found that nothing was sustainable, like all these different things. Sure, I would lose weight a lot of the time. I'd lose 50 pounds, 60 pounds sometimes. Um, but then I would go back to eating normal, uh, as they, <laughs> what's normal is, as you know, we know <laughs> isn't good in today's environment. Um, and then end up gaining it all back. And I, that was most of my life. You know, I, I did that for, I would say 20 years. Um, and I kind of gave up, <clears throat> I gave up about, uh, in my thirties. And then when I started approaching age 40, I thought, you know, my blood pressure is high. I'm almost 270 pounds. I was over 260 and I stopped weighing myself. I didn't want to step on the scale anymore. Um, but I knew I was coming up on 40. So I think I was about 38 years old. And I decided that, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes. If that means I'm going to start eating salads every day, then that's what I'm going to do. Um, and that's kind of how I made my way to trying a vegetarian and vegan diet. And they didn't seem to work as well as I, I hope they would. Um, so I had to go more extreme, right? <laughs> uh, so, you know, the vegetarian, it was, I, I followed it really well, was not really doing what I thought it would. You know, I, I was always told, and I think all of us are told, fruits and vegetables are healthy. Um, so I ate nothing but fruits and vegetables. And when I researched about gout, it was always saying that red meat is the cause, right? Avoid red meat, avoid meats. So that's what high purine foods and mostly meats. Uh, so that's what I was doing. I wanted to get rid of my gout. I had had gout for probably 10 or 15 years, very painful, ruined many, many vacations of mine. Um, so I, I went all in on this uh, vegetarian diet. It didn't really do much for me. Then I ended up going more extreme to a vegan diet. Um, and then that still wasn't working. So I decided to do a raw vegan diet. <clears throat> like, I don't know if you, do you know what that looks like at all? Uh, tell me about it. <laughs> so, so when you, when you go to a vegan diet, people have no idea like how much food you need to eat because it's, it is high in fiber, right? Um, so you're eating, you know, a pound, two, three pounds of vegetables a day and you're having all these fruits and. Wow. Um, it's, a, it's a huge amount of food. So you can imagine, like, you're spending a lot of time on the bathroom and people are not pleased when you're around <laughs> because you're really gassy, right? Causes a lot of digestive issues. Um, that's what happened to me anyways. And I, I tried it for a long time. People kept saying to me, oh, yeah, you'll adjust. You know, your body will adapt to it. You'll get new gut bacteria. Like, heard so many things. Um, so I kept hanging in there. Um, you know, I still wasn't really feeling any better. It almost, I started to get more gout attacks. It, it started to seem like to me. And so I thought, well, um, you know, I'm going to, so I kept researching. I looked, you know, I watched YouTube videos back then. I found some forums and I started seeing a lot of other people were struggling with it. Like a lot of people were actually getting sicker instead of better and especially the digestive issues. Um, which I now know, you know, is a fiber, like fibers actually causes more harm than it helps most of the time. Um, but I had a very strong belief system that, you know, fruits and vegetables were healthy. This was going to change me. So I thought, OK, maybe I just haven't went far enough. 
you know, maybe I, um, I want to have more energy because I was feeling tired all the time. And so I went over to a fruit diet thinking, you know, all these carbs is giving me all this energy. Uh, I should feel amazing. And uh, the fruit diet was a nightmare for me. <clears throat> so when I went over to be a fruitarian, um, you're literally eating like you've probably heard of 30 bananas a day. Have you seen yeah, that on YouTube? Really? The banana girl? Yeah. And durian rider. And so I, I followed them for quite a while and I thought, OK, this is just craziness. Like it just seemed ridiculous to me. But I thought I'm ready for ridiculous if I need it. Right. <laughs> I'm ready to do whatever it takes to kind of make a change here and get healthier and get rid of my gout and lose the weight which I've always struggled with. <clears throat> and uh, so I did that. I tried that. I tried um, doing the 30 bananas a day. Uh, I was the guy in at the, you know, the wholesale fruit place buying cases of bananas and um, all these different fruits. Um, and I always tried to keep a bit of um, seaweed and they call them sea vegetables um, in the plant-based community. So I, I did all that kind of stuff. I added in pea proteins, anything people were saying, because I was like, it's still not working for me. And I would always get told, I'm thinking about giving up, I would say. And they're like, oh, no, you're just doing it wrong. You're just doing it wrong. That's all I would hear over and over. You're just doing it wrong. You know, you'll adapt to this. This, you know, this I changed my life. It's going to work for you. So I, I kept trying. Like I spent over a year doing this fruit diet until finally I got a gout flare up that lasted 12 weeks. Um, I don't know if you know anything about gout. But imagine when you first sprain your ankle, right? If you sprain your ankle, you know how much pain that is when you first do it? Yeah. Um, that's what it's like. <clears throat> so when you have gout, it's always that kind of pain. Like your my ankle was swelling, my toe was swollen. Um, and it was week after week after week of this. Thinking, not even thinking that my fruit diet could be causing it. Had no idea that, you know, the fruit was causing this gout attack. Um, so I kept going into the doctor, getting all these different medications. I went through four different anti-inflammatory medications to try to knock down this gout attack or gout flare-up. And they didn't really work. <clears throat> um, it just kind of kept coming back. It might dull it or slow it down a little bit, but it, it didn't get rid of it. I didn't realize I was feeding it with fructose, um, which now I now know is one of the root causes of gout high fructose and high insulin. So, I, you know, that's what I was doing. I mean, this diet that's increasing my glucose all the time, lots of fructose in there, high insulin all the time. Um, I would need a nap on the couch every single day. Um, <clears throat> so I was, I'd drink a 32 ounce um, mason jar full of juice and I would carry that around. While I was drinking it, I felt pretty good. Like I would have lots of energy while I was drinking it. So what I realized, I'd just sip on that most of the day. As soon as I would stop having that juice, I would crash. Like I would fall asleep in a chair or I would need to go into the next room and sleep on my couch. <clears throat> like even if I was visiting family or something, I would be that guy falling asleep, <laughs> you know, on the couch or curling up somewhere. Yeah. Um, you know, it was just up and down energy all the time. I felt up and down. The gout attack was awful. And my wife was doing uh, a vegan diet as well at the time. And, um, she was doing yoga teacher training and that's all kind of part of their beliefs is, you know, doing a vegan diet. So, uh, we were doing it together <clears throat> and I was, I ended up doing raw vegan and then the fruitarian and she was still doing a vegan diet. And after 12 weeks ago, I kind of got fed up <laughs> and I went downstairs one day and I cooked up a pound of bacon. So, you know, I went out, grabbed it at the grocery store and, came back, cooked it up before my wife woke up and um, it was just about done. And I heard her yelling at me, what are you doing down there? Is that bacon? <laughs> uh, yeah, she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe it. And the reason I did the pound of bacon is that, um, do you know who Abel James is? Yeah. Fat Burning Man. Fat Burning Man. So, Huge inspiration for me. Yeah. So, you know, I would kind of been listening to, you know, plant based uh, vegan information. So you're in that echo chamber. Right. So that's all you can think. This is the way to do it. Wasn't working. Um, started looking up some health podcasts, found Abel James. Here he is talking about vegetables just being the carrier for butter. 
And I was like, ooh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, he, he was he was basically saying, yeah, he eats vegetables, but they're more like a filler for him. Um, and he loves his bacon. He loves steak. He loves burgers. And you look at the guy, he's sitting there with an eight pack in, in amazing shape, right? Best shape of his life. Um, and here he is eating bacon and burgers every day. And I'm like, no, that that's not possible. <laughs> like, I couldn't believe it. Here I am eating salads that I hated. I never liked it. I never liked doing a plant-based diet, never enjoyed the foods. Um, and here's somebody getting, you know, he's ripped, he's healthy, he's in shape, you know, he's uh, very energetic and he's eating all the foods I love. So I was like, you know what? I have nothing to lose at this point. I've had gout for 12 weeks straight. My, you know, I'm having a nap on the couch every day just to get through the day. Not much was kind of improving. My blood pressure was actually higher. Um, my liver markers were high. My A1C was higher. Um, same with my wife. My wife was having the same stuff when she was doing the vegan diet. She had a lot of liver issues. Um, so I ended up thinking, well, I have nothing to lose. I might as well do the bacon thing. You know, I'm going to try it. Sounds awesome. Uh, and I cooked up a pound of bacon and started doing that every day, going to more like meat and veg. And my gout disappeared within a couple of days. And I have not had a gout attack since. So, and that's been uh, seven years now. Wow. Like and, since, since I first, you know, went to the low carb or paleo even. And you were still like, how quickly did your diet change? You know, like day one, it was probably mostly your normal diet plus a pound of bacon. How did it evolve from there? Um, well, no, I, I, would, I was doing all fruit. So when I decided to go with bacon, it was more like bacon and vegetables. Like some, I always thought greens were the healthiest thing, right? So I, I didn't want to give up my greens. But I really went to, you know, bacon and burgers and um, a lot of meat <clears throat> with the greens. So really, I was doing keto or, you know, really low carb, actually. Um, There's a few other people that kind of inspired me around that same time. Um, I found Jimmy Moore. Actually, he was on Abel James's podcast and that sounded interesting. So I, it all kind of happened pretty quick. I started transitioning over to low carb. Um, because my gout disappeared right within a few days and I was like, wow, like, I think I'm onto something here. Like, maybe this is it. And I was like, there's no way, <clears throat> um, you know, there has to be a catch. I guess that's what I kind of thought. There has to be a catch to this. There's no way that bacon could be healthy. Um, so that kind of started me, you know, on my road to researching all this, like I wanted to understand it. I didn't want to just hope that it's not going to clog my arteries because, Literally a few weeks before, if I seen somebody eating bacon, I would say, you have no idea how bad that is for you. That's going to clog your arteries. I was one of them, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. And because that's what I heard, you know, that it becomes an echo chamber and it just reinforces itself having those belief systems. I think if I was to give some, if I was to try to give people a takeaway, um, I would say that a really important thing to do is actually be honest with yourself and what the results that you're actually getting are and not kind of get, not really take on other people's belief systems, put them to the test. Um, so that's kind of what I realized right then and there when I first started this is that, you know, you should experiment, you should test things. Um, sure, you can learn all this information, but see how it works for you and, you know, track things, prove it. Uh, so that's what I did. I I thought this is a crazy diet, eating all this bacon, you know, eating all those burgers. Um, and my wife thought the same thing. You know, this there's no way this is good for you. Uh, so I thought, well, you know what? I'll just start doing my blood work. Um, and I did. I started doing my blood work. And right away within the first, you know, I would say month or so, uh, my uric acid had started coming down. My A1C had started coming down. I'd start losing some weight. Um, it was literally everything across the board. Um, you know, I had some success for the first year and a half. Um, I actually transitioned into keto pretty quickly. Um, and I had success doing it. I actually felt a lot better. Uh, all my health problems went away pretty quick because I had acid reflux really bad. I was on a medication for that. Um, I also got those gout flare ups, like I said, probably once or twice a year. They seem to ruin at least five to 10 vacations that I went on. Wow. Um, cause I'd go on vacation. I'd have some drinks and 
you know, alcohol is a big cause of gout, I've come to find out. Um, I think a lot of people know that. But what they don't know is that fructose, you know, acts a lot like alcohol. And it's another, you know, contributor or big one. Um, so, yeah, the gout I've kind of gotten rid of. Um, early on, I got rid of my acid reflux. And the acid reflux was really bad. Like, I'm talking burning down the middle of my chest. I thought I was having a heart attack many times. I was, I'd was i end up in the hospital frequently. Um and that went away. And that was happening while I was on my fruit-based diet, while I was on my vegan diet. Like, that happened the whole way through. Um, but as soon as I transitioned over, that went away. Like, I still have not had acid reflux for seven years. Um, it's It's been a pretty wild ride. Like, even everything, even from a cold and flu. Like, I used to get a cold or flu two, three times a year. Every time there was a cold season, my kids would bring it home. And I would catch it right away. I haven't had a cold or flu for seven years since I first started keto. And um, now I've gotten to pretty much a carnivore approach now. Um, and where did the now. bacon so, yeah, experiment I, come into it itself? Yeah. Okay. Um, so after I did keto for a year and a half, I only lost about 15 or 20 pounds. And that's about the same weight that people lose for their initial water weight, right? They lost their initial water weight. So, um, but I knew that I liked keto and I knew that I wanted to keep doing it. And I was starting to learn all I could about it. I was binge listening to different podcasts like Jimmy Moore. He was one of the only ones out there at the time. Um, and I started watching videos. I started looking at studies and stuff. And I thought, you know, I, sh- this, I should... Um, I should try a little experiment to kind of bring more attention. And my whole purpose of this is this had already got me off of all the medications. I seen a little bit of weight loss, but I wanted to kind of um, get the attention of my friends and family on Facebook. And because they're telling me how bad bacon is, I was putting up photos of bacon that I was eating in different meals sometimes. And I was like, it it really isn't. Um, And I'm going to prove it. So I thought I'm going to do a little experiment where um, and It was inspired by the 30 bananas a day. (laughs) So, you know, the 30 bananas a day that we were just talking about. Um, The bacon experiment, originally, I was going to do 30 pieces of bacon a day. That was my idea. I thought, I can do 30 pieces of bacon a day. And according to the plant-based community, that should kill me, right? That's going to clog my arteries. (laughs) I'm going to die. And I felt pretty comfortable, though, after a year and a half. And I, I actually reached out to Jimmy Moore. And I said, I'm thinking about doing this bacon experiment where I'm eating nothing but bacon for 30 days straight. Um, what do you think of that? He's like, he didn't even hesitate. He was like, go for it. He's like, I, he's like, I come up with the egg fast. <laughs> um, like, so I was like, oh, okay. Like that's, I didn't, I thought he would try to talk me out of it or, but he kind of said, go for it. I think that's an awesome idea. I think cool. you'll be surprised. Like, um, so I'll always remember that. And it almost like I needed the permission, you know, like, and it was really hard. Got to remember, I've been doing plant based for a while at that point. So I had thought this is, you know, it's, it's like I still had a bunch of those stigmas with me. Um, so I thought I'm going to do blood work before the bacon experiment. And after the bacon experiment, I'm going to track my waist. I'm going to track my body fat percentage. I'm going to track as many things as I could. Um, so I went into the gym and used their $10,000 scale. Uh, I did get an extensive blood panel done. I actually went in um, and I told my doctor, I was like, I'm coming up on 40. I'd like to get some blood work done. Um, my wife would come in with me <laughs> and she goes, tell her what you're going to do, Dan. And I sat there kind of, you know, like, oh, <laughs> uh, she's like, tell her, tell her what you're going to do. And I, so I was like, OK, I'm going to do this bacon experiment. <laughs> where I'm eating nothing but bacon for 30 days straight. And I was hoping to check out my blood work and see what this does. And she was like, oh, boy. (laughs) Um, So she thought, okay, your liver's not going to like this. So she put down a liver test. She put, you know, there was quite a few tests that she had put down that weren't part of the standard panel that I was having run. She's like, because she thought that quite a few things are going to suffer because of this. And uh, I ended up doing the bacon experiment. Um, I kind of want to talk about that blood work and the health part of it just for a second, because I think that's really important. Um, After the 30 days of doing this, you know, I 
did the weight loss or had got the weight loss from it, went in and had a follow-up appointment the day after and everything across the board improved. Um, liver markers improved, my A1C improved, uh, uric acid levels and liver, mar- uh, yeah, the liver I already said, <clears throat> um, there wasn't anything that got worse and my blood pressure was another big one. So my blood pressure came down 26 points. Um, and that was while having around eight to 10,000 milligrams of sodium every day, which, you know, is a huge amount of salt. Uh, most people would think that that would skyrocket your blood sugar. Uh, yeah. bacon is clogged, you know, it's clogging your arteries, right? Um, that's what most people think, or that's what most people say. And I seen the opposite, you know, every single marker improved, even my cholesterol had improved, my triglycerides had come down, my HDL went up. Um, there wasn't anything that was a red flag. And, you know, even after seven years of doing keto and then carnivore, I'm still waiting for the catch. I, I still feel like, you know, what's the catch? There has to be a catch because to me, it's too good to be true. I enjoy all the foods. I love them. And now I'm in the best health of my life. Um, for the bacon experiment, I want to talk about it just a little bit more. So I created a group on Facebook called the bacon experiment. And I think I had 300 people in there following me. Um, and they kind of started sharing it. And as I kept doing it, I think I did the first week and I lost maybe seven pounds or something. And many, many people said, well, that's just water weight. You know, that's just water weight. There's no way you could lose seven pounds in a week. And I was like, well, I'm already low carb and keto before I even started doing this. And um, so I don't think a lot of it's water weight. <clears throat> week two came and I lost another, you know, three or four pounds or so. Um, and people started kind of showing some interest right at that point. It was like, wow, you're still losing because they they were expecting me to gain it back. Um, so there started to kind of, it got shared around the keto community a little bit. More and more people started trickling in to the group kind of watching this crazy guy eat bait, nothing but bacon. Um, so, you know, I was doing videos. I was taking photos. I was showing that, you know, I'm actually doing this. I, I, I'm cooking the bacon in the oven. Um, it's, it's funny looking back how I started. I was going to have bulletproof coffees during it because I didn't think bulletproof coffees would affect anything, you know, because calories don't matter on keto, uh, supposedly. <laughs> Um, but I got talked out of it by some carnivores. Uh, even back then, they didn't call it carnivore. It was more called uh, zero carb. It was like a big zero carb right. community. Yeah. And so I went in there. <clears throat> so I, I did research before I did the bacon experiment. I went into the zero carb community. Um, there are some fantastic Facebook groups. And there was people that have been doing that for 10, 15 years. So suddenly my bacon experiment didn't seem so crazy to me. Like at first I thought this is not like no one's done this before. Like this is insane. Right. Um, like a lot of people got very excited and people were saying, don't do it. You know, don't do it. But you're putting your health at risk. And um, but in the keto or in the carnivore community, or the zero carb community, they're all like, yeah, like I've been eating nothing but steak for the last 15 years. And these are people that are in excellent shape. Like they look younger. They look 10, 20 years younger than they are. Um, very lean, very healthy, very, you know, they have lots of energy. Um, so I got talking to those people and they said, oh yeah, the bacon, you know, I have bacon sometimes, but I feel like beef is more stable. Um, not a big deal. You're probably going to do fantastic. And they were saying that um, you'll probably find it works a little bit better than keto. Um, and, you know, if they were right, it did. I kind of had that. So they kind of, I had a little bit of, knowledge, I guess, like a little bit of encouragement behind me, or I kind of felt like I'm on the right track here. Um, after doing that and talking to people in the zero carb and Jimmy Moore telling me to go for it. Um, so I kept at it and I think it went on for about two weeks. And then by the third week, it, uh, you know, people were, there was a bit of a, I don't know how you, a bit of excitement kind of growing about it. Um, cause people are realizing that, Hey, he's actually going to make it the full 30 days here and he's not going to die. <laughs> uh, so I kept going and, um, kept losing weight. I was posting daily, like telling people, you know, I'm down another pound, I'm down another pound or half a pound. Um, and it was kind of getting shared all over the place. And I ended up at the end of it, um, down 20 pounds. And I wish I could remember, I should have looked it up before I came on, 
but I lost a, um, a good deal of body fat as well. Like my body fat percentage came down quite a bit. Like for 30 days, I couldn't believe it. Um, but we double checked it. I, we used calipers. It wasn't just, um, you know, using the scale. It, it was more accurate than that. We did a seven point caliper. Well, I did the scale as well with the impedance and everything, but, um, I kind of did both. And yeah, my, I think my body fat percentage, I'm trying to think it came down, I think five or six percent in 30 days. Wow. And how, so, how did you like figure out how much to eat? What types of bacon? Like, did you have any rules around it or anything like that? Any planning that went into it? Or is it just, I'm going to eat bacon for 30 days? Well, I kind of got lucky with it. <laughs> um, so I did, I started out kind of looking at it, how I'd done the 30 bananas a day. I actually did that. Um, it was very difficult. I did it for a little bit though. Uh, so that's where that idea came from is that I'm going to try 30 pieces of bacon a day. And when I started looking at 30 pieces of bacon, um, I ended up landing on two pounds. That's what the weight was. Okay. The weight of the uncooked bacon was two pounds a day. Uh, so that's where I ended up two pounds yeah. a day, every day. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I did and I don't talk about a lot. Um, I actually did one pound of, you know, lean bacon. So back bacon and one pound of the belly cut bacon. So it wasn't just all the higher fat bacon. It was kind of a mix of both. Um, and I did that because I'd been in, um, there's a group on Facebook called keto gains and they, talked about the importance of protein a lot so i wanted to up my protein a bit and i did a pound of each <clears throat> and i calculated the cal- calories out and i thought it was 2500 calories a day which was more than i was eating before so at the end of the bacon experiment i had a belief that calories did not matter on keto as long as you cut out carbs completely you could have as many calories as you want um, that's what I believed at the end of it. Uh, I later found that wasn't true. Um, so what I'd done and that got published on the diet doctor. I did an interview with, um, Tasha Metcalf of Ketogasm and then the diet doctor picked it up and then thousands of people came into my bacon experiment group all of a sudden. Um, and a lot of them are wanting to do it themselves. Like they heard about it. They thought it sounded cool. They liked bacon. They seen the results that I got. And they wanted to do it. Um, but I wasn't really recommending it at the beginning. You know, I wanted to get my blood work back. I wanted to do more research. Uh, so I did. And kind of the more I looked into it, the more I looked into bacon. So bacon specifically is what I started looking into. Um, like the nitrates in bacon, I found an article from Chris Cresser. And he was showing that, you know, we have more nitrates in our saliva than there is in 10 packs of bacon. Same with, you know, a single piece of salary would have way more nitrates than a pack of bacon or five packs of bacon for that matter. Uh, so I quickly started thinking, well, maybe the nitrate thing isn't a problem. So I started looking into the research and bringing up studies. And I guess where the problem is, is if you do high heat cooking on bacon, that will form something called nitrosamines. Um, so then I started recommending cook your bacon at 350 degrees in the oven or use an air fryer or a microwave, like cook it at lower heat. Um, so that was one of the things uh, that was kind of my first concern was the nitrates and the cancer risk. And I found out there was not really much to that. Um, and the next part of it was the fats, right? The saturated fats, they're going to clog your arteries. And of course, we know that that's not true. Um, so I looked at stuff from the British Medical Journal. And I think it's Dr. Asim Mahaltra. He put out a paper and he showed that there is no correlation to heart disease and, and saturated fat. Um, so that was kind of made me feel a little bit better. And then when I, I was still looking into bacon specifically, and I found that it's actually 60 to 70 percent oleic acid, which is the same fat found in olive oil. Right. And I, so I seen that and I was like, oh, wow, like that's pretty interesting. You know, every uh, most plant-based people would say that bacon is going to clog your arteries, yet they would say that olive oil is the best fat you could have. It's the same thing, right? They're both oleic acid. Uh, so, you know, I kept discovering things like that, and then I started to feel better and better about it. Like, wow, okay, it's oleic acid. It's the same as olive oil. 
Um, the protein breakdown, all the amino acids are actually great. There's a lot of choline in there. There's a lot of B vitamins. I was like, bacon's actually pretty nutrient dense. Like it's actually a good source of protein. And, you know, after you cook it down, it's not all that much fat. It ends up being about a one to one ratio of fat to protein. Um, and to finish what I was talking about earlier, about the calories. <clears throat> so what I found out was how I was calculating calories was before you cook the bacon. So the uncooked calories, right? And that's where the fat's probably three times higher. So after you cook it, you actually render off most of the fat. You know, unless you're taking shots of bacon grease, which I did during the bacon experiment. I had one shot of bacon grease just for fun. <laughs> a bacon, a bacon shot. I did a live, a uh, live video. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, ended up going over and doing that and I recalculated the calories after it's cooked and two pounds of bacon turns into about maybe half a pound of bacon by the time it's all cooked or three quarters of a pound. So it ended up being more like 1200 calories a day. So I was like, okay, so I was in a calorie deficit that whole time. Um, meanwhile, on the interview I did with Tasha Metcalf of Ketogasm and that got covered on the diet doctor, I told everybody in the world, right, that I was having 2500 calories a day eating more than I was before, and now I'm losing all this weight. Um, but I had made a mistake there. So since then, I've been kind of making up for that. You know, I, I'm a big advocate of protein, meat, carnivore. I also always say that keto is not magic. You know, there's nothing magical here. You still need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. And you'll see, you know, huge health benefits and hormonal benefits of cutting out the carbs. Yeah, I'm so relieved to hear you say that, Dan, <laughs> um, because I think there's a lot of dogma in this space. And I think it does, mm -hmm. there's so much more to weight loss and to metabolic health than and eating than calories. But um, mm -hmm. saying that calories don't matter at all, I think is um, negligent. And I really like folks in the keto and carnivore space that come at it from, you know, make sure you're hitting your protein. Um, find a way to get in a sustainable caloric deficit. You know, it doesn't have to be a protein sparing modified fast every day, um, but it's also not a butter chugging contest. Um, so it's really great to hear that from you. Yeah. And I, I kind of had that reinforced. Like a lot of people, once I felt really good about it, did all like as much research as I could, every single aspect as I could of, from bacon or keto and carnivore. Um, then I started actually saying that if you guys want to do this, go ahead. Here's the portions that I had and kind of laid out a little plan for people. Um, and I would have people that come in and they would cook a whole bunch of bacon and then they would eat two pounds of bacon every day, but cook bacon. Ah, very so different. it ended up being about, yeah, it would be like 3000, 3,500 calories, somewhere around there. Um, because it's all condensed. So it's quite different than what I was doing and they wouldn't lose any weight they would actually start gaining weight and they're like, no, like we're like, well, this works every time. It always works. It, you know, every single person that comes in here loses all kinds of weight. Um, so, let, so we'd kind of dive into what's going on and that's what we'd find out is that, you know, the people that were having two pounds of cooked bacon, which is three times more calories, they would not only not lose anything, they would start gaining weight. So that happened a, a lot of times, like over and over and over. And so I started doing my own experiments. I would try to overeat keto foods or carnivore foods. Like I would have uh, six, six burger patties all stacked up on top of each other. And I would start gaining weight. Um, I still get in debates all the time about, you know, calories don't matter and it's all hormones. And I think to a certain degree that's true. You know, hormones get ahead of your calorie intake because hormones dictate your hunger. And they also dictate um, the addiction opponent or component of it all. Right. I don't know if, I don't know if that's something you've looked at at all. Yeah, I have had um several folks on the show that I've talked about um addiction with um especially um not not just food addiction but also how um ketosis and um controlling your carbs and your dopamine hits can help with other addictions potentially. A lot of that's speculative yeah. at this point. But um there's one really interesting study with yeah. rats where they have rats that are in ketosis and not in ketosis, and they actually have mm -hmm. a different neurochemical response to cocaine. 
um, when they're in ketosis. It's like not as strong. Um, but yeah, super, super interesting. The whole topic of addiction. And Dan, I wanted to ask you how, how has your eating evolved personally, you know, since the bacon experiments, since working with people, having some of these revelations around vegetables, fasting, protein, et cetera, um, calories, uh, what is kind of a day of eating look like for you? Um, well, I've, I guess to the right now, I'm probably, I would say 90% carnivore. Um, and I've been doing that for a while now. I just found that, you know, how the less is more or less is better when you're yeah. doing this. I, I, I wasn't sure whether that was true for a long time. I kind of felt like you can eliminate greens. Greens was my holdout. Um, and that's probably just because of Google, right? You type in the healthiest foods and, you know, the, what's the best for you? It's always going to be greens. Um, but then I kind of realized, I mean, I would try to do a lot of my own experiments all the time. And that's how I kind of figured out how my diet was going to be. You know, if I wanted to see how eggs were going to affect me, I would eat nothing but eggs for five days or seven days. But I know, right? I know that it's the eggs, right? Especially if you just have water with it um, or say black coffee. Um, so I did that with a whole bunch of different foods. I did that with the bacon. I did that with eggs. I did that with chicken. Um and all these different things. And I found that uh, salmon was actually one of the best foods for satiety and for weight loss that actually beat out bacon. Um, these days, I just keep it really simple, you know, really basic. Um, I don't want to have to put much time, much effort. So I don't put up a lot of food posts anymore, you know, because I'm really just cooking up a couple count pounds of ground beef a lot of times. Um, I might add in a few things to bump up the nutrition in that, like so say some uh, powdered desiccated grass-fed liver. Um, I put a little bit of that in. I might put a little bit of collagen in with it. Um, sometimes I use nutritional yeast, which, you know, a hardcore carnivore probably wouldn't do that. But um, I try to cut myself a little bit of slack. So when I say 90, 95%, I'm still having things like mustard or some condiments and that kind of thing. Um but yeah, for the most part, it's it's carnivore, and uh, I do still eat a lot of bacon, eggs. You know, I do have some seafood. I know getting those omega threes in are really important. Um, that can actually convert to DHA. Uh, so I try to get that in here and there. I I have some shrimp, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's all it's fairly lean for the most part. Um, one th thing I will say about the protein and the fat, a couple things that I've noticed, like my observations over the years, have been protein seems to give you that satiety right after you're done your meal, like you feel fuller when you're done your meal. And I find that fat allows you to go longer between meals. Yes, um, I that's agree. Been, that's been my observation. Like I've noticed if you go too lean, you're tired, you know, you can't go as long between meals. Uh, fasting is very difficult, even intermittent fasting. Uh, so you kind of have to find a balance there. And I've found that one-to-one -one is good. Um, and I do agree with a lot of things that Dr. Ted Naiman says about protein, and that's, you know, his focus. Um, so if somebody goes a bit higher on protein and they do fat, that's still going to work out quite nicely. But, yeah, I, I think for the most part, I, I have a lot of lean meats. I have seafood. And uh, I do have a lot of uh, the fattier meats like bacon and pork belly. Um, once in a while, ribeye. Uh, a lot of eggs as well. But ground beef is kind of, I would say, more ground beef than anything else. Yeah, sounds like you found a excellent approach that works well for you. And um, maybe you can talk uh, a little bit, Dan, about... Um, the different ways you're working with people, maybe some things you have coming up and, um, and any places people can find you. And I'll, of course, provide links to it all in the show notes at carnivorecast.com. Sure. Yeah. Actually, I want to give a couple of stories here first before I do yeah, that. Yeah. Please um, do. It's, 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 it's been incredible. Like, just incredible. You know, I've, I've went broke over the past few years. Like, I used to, I was very successful. I had my own company. Um, and I would work for dating companies out of the U.S. I'm up here in Canada. Um, I made a lot of money, did well at it, enjoyed it. Um, but going as a keto coach, you know, it's been a real struggle financially. It's been very, very difficult. But I'm changing people's lives every day. Like, 
I still can't believe it. And like, you know, people are joining my program that I've been running. I've been running a keto program for three years, added carnivore this year. Um, and people come in for the weight loss or some people come in just because they like bacon, right? They don't even really know what low carb <laughs> keto is. Uh, like I literally had a guy come in to the bacon experiment and he was a type one diabetic. His name's Michael Call. And I know he wouldn't mind because he's still he's still around. And this was like when I first did it four years ago. And he was like, Dan, he's like, can I do this bacon thing? And I was like, well, <laughs> you know, you better talk to your doctor because, you know, you're probably taking a lot of insulin. Like you told me he's a type one diabetic. I got I called the guy up. I'm like, I got to talk to him because I don't want him to start doing this and then realize that, wow, you know, you're taking way too much insulin all of a sudden. I understood that much um, about type one diabetes at the time. So I called him up and kind of told him how to do it properly. You know, you've got to monitor closely, work with your doctor on changing your dose um, of insulin, especially your fast acting. And, you know, he thought he tried it and, you know, he called me up the next day, really excited. He's like, I I've like my blood sugars down to like a hundred. He's like, I haven't seen that for a long time. My blood sugars are always high. He's like, I'm following the recommendations that I got from my diabetes educator. He's like, I'm having like 60% carbs every day. And uh, you know, his blood sugars are all over the place. He ended up going into the hospital with DKA. Um, so ketoacidosis that happened to him. <clears throat> so he was a little leery when I mentioned that this is keto. He's like, oh, I've had ketoacidosis. And I, so I explained the difference and um, got him to work with his doctor on it. His doctor actually got on board and yeah, his, he actually has so much better blood sugar control. Like it's changed his life. And he just kind of stumbled in because he thought he liked bacon. You know, he was following a bacon page that shared my experiment. And uh, so that's one really neat story. Like it's changed his life completely. You know, he's probably avoided a lot of complications. Um, I have another client. Her name is Kara Lee and she's reversed her type two diabetes this year. Um, and she's lost 75 pounds as well. Uh, but I see that kind of stuff pretty often, like fairly frequently people come in with type two diabetes and then it's not, you know, I'm not giving any type of medical advice or anything like that. Um, but after a while, they'll message me and say, well, my doctor says I'm no longer diabetic. Is that even possible? I was told that's not possible. It's going to get worse. Um, so that's another thing that I've seen a lot of, which has been incredible. The weight loss. I've had people that have lost half their body weight. So they start off at, you know, 250, 260 or, or more. And, you know, they lose 120, 130 pounds. And some of them have done it within like a year and a half, two years. Um, I've seen some really rapid weight loss from some people. I will say that um, not everybody responds the same way to carnivore and keto. When people talk about us being individually different or, you know, um, unique, I do see that. You know, I do see that some people do amazing. I've seen people lose 60 pounds in three months. Um, so I had one client that did do that. So she lost 60 pounds in three months and her son was doing it with her. And her son had lost 60 pounds in three months. Um, by the time she got to the six month mark, she was down, I'm thinking 80 pounds. No, actually by eight months. So after eight months, she was down 80 pounds. And her son, that's 15 years old, which, you know, that's when I had the hardest time of my life. I was obese at, at that age and got teased a lot. So it made me really happy to be helping this kid as well. And his name's Matt. And Matt actually lost 110 pounds in about eight months. So, you know, that's life changing. I've seen the photos of him. Um, she was really excited. She put up her before and afters and then put up her son's before and afters. And, you know, that's going to change that kid's life. Yeah, it's amazing. He's, uh, you know, and he's telling people it's funny because people would hear what he's doing. They're like, oh, you're doing that keto diet. And he's like, yeah, it's actually working great for me. Uh, you know, I feel amazing. Um, and they're, they're saying, well, you drink those bulletproof coffees, right? And you have, must have a lot of fat bombs. Like, do you take the exogenous ketones? And he's like, no, no, you don't need any of that stuff. And it's funny to hear him, like, um, how my client was telling me that he corrects people all the time. And he teaches them the right way to do keto or like a cleaner version, I would say at least. I don't know about the right way, but a cleaner whole food, base it on meat. Um, and he's telling other people to do that. So 
you know, it's just, I always get a kick out of that. <laughs> like there he is correcting people, you know, that have been keto and he's telling them to do it a different way. Yeah. And then they start doing a lot better too. Um, so that's, that's a couple that I can kind of think of off the top of my head, but I've, you know, I've had probably a thousand clients through my, my keto program and it's called keto camp. Um, and how that came about is I did the bacon experiment and lots of people were doing it. And they're like, Dan, I've lost, you know, 20 pounds this month. I had some people that were over 300 pounds and they would lose 30 pounds in their first 30 days. And they're like, now what do I do? Right. Do I just go back to eating what I was? And I'm like, well, do keto, right? Or do carnivore. And they would be like, what's that? <laughs> uh, so I was like, okay. Uh, and I was teaching people one at a time inside the group about keto and doing videos. And finally, I thought I need a program that I can just, I can't be giving support all the time. And that's actually where my business ended up failing. And because um, I was spending so much time on it, because it was just every person I would help, I would see a huge change. Like I'm changing that person's life. You know, here's somebody that, you know, grew up in a small town, uh, never got secondary. Like I only ended up going up to grade 11, never graduated high school. Um, But I've been able to spend, you know, thousands of hours learning all this stuff. And here I am changing people's lives, you know, every single day. Um, So get back to what I'm doing right now. Um, I've been also running free challenges and I've been able to learn a lot from that because I've done these free challenges and I've had probably 10 or 20,000 people through. Um, I still remember one seven day, I do these seven free seven day keto challenges and I did one and I had about 150 people participate and that 150 people, they lost 844 pounds in seven days. Wow. Um, I, I put up a fish picture because I was like, I can't even picture that. What does 844 pounds look like? Um, so I found a picture of this marlin or something. It was like a great big fish out of the ocean. It was like the size of five people. I posted that up and was like, that's an 800 pound fish. Like, wow, <laughs> that, you know, that's gone in seven days. That, it's incredible. Um, so I, I, I've always tried to keep running those free challenges. I've been doing those for a couple of years now. Um, my paid group I've done for three years. And finally, I wanted to scale it up. I've always wanted to help a lot of people. That's always been my mission, like help as many people as I can. Um, so on my full keto camp program, which has been basically a 30 day boot camp, um, I just recently started offering it at a dollar, like a one dollar trial and people can come in and then it's on me, right? To prove that this works. They're spending a dollar. Uh, they're getting over a hundred different recipes. Um, if they stay. So what I did too is because I don't know where people are starting off. Some people might not be familiar with keto or carnivore or any of that type of stuff at all. So I withheld the, I have a protein sparing modified fast menu as well, which I've seen a lot of success, but that's, I look at that as more of an advanced protocol. It's not for everybody. Um, so I don't offer that right away and I don't offer carnivore right away either. I wait till people get to their second month. I want them to do a month of keto to begin with. Um, and then once they start getting fat adapted, transition over to the other, to the other menus. Um, and I've also made it a lifestyle program now where I'm giving people support long term. Um, and I think having a support group is huge. Like going back to the addiction, um, aspect of it all that we were talking about. Um, one of the best ways to help people is this, that sense of community. And I've heard Rob Wolf talking about this recently as well. And totally agree with them. Like people need the support. They need that sense of community. They need to be in it with other people because a lot of times your family's not. Um, so that's been a big aspect. I've wanted this support group where we're all building each other up. We're getting accountability buddies. We're all cheering each other on. There's never, you know, any shaming or anything like that. If somebody cheats or goes back or falls off the wagon, as they say, you know, everybody's there to help them back, get on track. Um, and we keep it simple. Like, to this day, if somebody, now this is for your audience as well. If somebody goes off carnivore or they go off of keto, let's say at their birthday or a holiday, like we just passed the holidays, a lot of people are getting back on now. The best way to get back into ketosis and kind of get back in control of your eating, I feel is carnivore. And more specifically, I would say the bacon experiment. Um, eating nothing but bacon for say three to five days. I'm not talking 30 days or anything like that. Um, but I find it works better than fasting because 
once you're out of ketosis and once you're back into that addiction cycle, having carbs all the time, you know, it's, you're hungry all the time. So trying to do a water fast can be difficult. Um, but if you eat two pounds of bacon every day, you know, you're getting lots of food, you're getting lots of nutrition in there, you're getting fat, you're getting protein. And most importantly, you're getting salt, um, which I'd overlooked for a long time. Salt is very, very important. Um, yeah, I'm sure you've come to that conclusion too. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's why the baking slam works so well. That's why people feel so good. You know, if you do bacon only for a few days, you don't get the keto flu. You don't get that dehydration. Um, so you kind of avoid that, which that's what kind of prevents a lot of people from doing it. They, they will say that, you know, I tried keto. I felt terrible or I tried carnivore. I didn't feel good. I felt fatigued and low energy. Um, and they don't realize that if they had just taken some salt, put it on their tongue or had a cup of chicken broth with some salt in it, you know, they could have avoided the keto flu totally um, and felt good. And the bacon seems to do that. So I still use the bacon experiment, even with my clients. So if they've struggled over the weekend or over the holidays, like, don't worry, not a big deal. You know, just get right back on. It's like trying to quit smoking because there is an addiction. It's a very real addiction. Um, and you mentioned that study. I've seen actually a few where they've actually done brain scans and they actually show they actually took some samples of dopamine in the brain. Um, and what they found was certain foods, like especially carbs and fats together, um, carbohydrates, they actually do give that huge dopamine response. And that just builds on itself. Like dopamine reinforces the behavior. It wants you to keep doing that because it's good for your survival. So you're seeking out that energy. Um, there's been no more powerful way to break that than going to abstinence or zero carbs or carnivore. Um, that's why I'm a huge fan of carnivore because I was in that addiction cycle for most of my life. I was eating every two hours. Um, I was eating chips. I was eating McDonald's. And I kept thinking the portions are getting smaller. <laughs> like, I really believe that. Yeah. Um, I I still remember now here I, I love sharing little stories because people remember stories they learn by stories um, but just before I got married it was it was a little bit of stress because we did this great big wedding um, two hours away from our house and I remember having fast food because we just did not have time to make meals or anything we so I had McDonald's I'm talking I've been married for a long time now this was back in 2005 so <clears throat> we went to McDonald's had Big Mac, French fries, a Coke. And by the time I got to this location, after an hour and a half of driving, we were starving again. Um, so I, I think that, you know, you only have a short amount of time before you want more of it because it's very addicting. It does not fill you up. And I, I remember thinking, are the portions smaller? Is the Big Mac smaller than it used to be? Um, and, you know, it wasn't, but I didn't understand how powerful that addiction was that you wanted, especially in times of stress you go back to those comfort foods, which generally ends up being carbs and fats together. Um, you know, pizza, ice cream, French fries, chips, uh, fudge. You know, there's so many different things that, and I don't want to say some of those foods because they're trigger foods. Um, that's how I look at them now. They are trigger foods because they are very addictive. Uh, I think the way out is finding a support group, finding community, and also learning. Education is another huge hugely important thing and very powerful. So listen to podcasts like yours um, and kind of immersing yourself in it. I feel like it can help get you, you know, off of the carbohydrates, break you out of that addiction cycle um, by learning, having people to support you and cutting it out completely like abstinence. I think it's very powerful. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, and I think you're doing amazing work, Dan, helping a ton of people. Um, and I'm sure this podcast will be inspiring for a lot of people, either for themselves or, or loved ones or friends they want to help. Yeah, I hope so. And, you know, I've been trying to help as many people as I want. Um, I think sharing out, you know, anybody that's putting out this kind of information, um, they're helping a lot of people. And the reason why, too, is you're helping them. They see that it works. And then the word of mouth, like that butterfly effect. Yeah. You know, some of the people that 
were in my program and that I taught keto to, they're now doing keto coaching themselves. They have their own pages, their own Instagram stuff. They're putting it out there. And I love that, right? It's your, so it's like, I've helped thousands of people and then those thousands have helped thousands more. Um, so when you kind of look at it like that, you know, what you're doing, uh, what I'm doing, what other keto educators are doing, um, people that are teaching carnivore, it is making a difference. You know, it's, it's making a huge difference. Yeah, it's it's a grassroots movement, and that's the way it has to grow. Um, but when you transform someone's life, it's it's undeniable, and um, people can't stop talking about it. Um, well, thank you so much for your time today, Dan. Really appreciate it. Um, and I'll provide links to all of your groups and resources in the show notes. Really appreciate you taking the time. Sure. Yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk. And yeah, if people want to jump in to my program, it's it's a dollar. So it's less than a price of a coffee right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, and, you know, I, so it's there's no risk to anybody. And, you know, maybe it won't work out for them, um, but maybe it'll change your life. You know, it has for a lot of people. Um, it's been very powerful. It's been a really wild ride over the past few years and seeing what I've seen. I'm glad to be able to share a bit of that today. So appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the Carnivore Cast on Patreon. By becoming a patron, you'll help us reach more people and continue to create content on Carnivore. There are also exclusive perks available, such as private Q&As, consultations with me, and more. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash carnivorecast. Check the episode description for the link. Thank you, and I'll see you there. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Carnivore Cast. If you enjoyed this episode, please review on iTunes. It really helps us out, and share it with a friend. What questions would you like answered, or who would you like to hear from in the carnivore or research community? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at CarnivoreCast, or go to CarnivoreCast.com. You can also email me at info at CarnivoreCast.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep it carnivore.